Good morning, Tom Padula from Insegna Booksellers and uh, Tom Padula TV on YouTube. Uh, a real pleasure again this morning to be able to do this other pratica of um, for Italian, Italian lessons. Because after all, you know, when uh, I began this journey of online uh, in relation to uh, in relation to the teaching of uh, grammar and uh, Italian and other languages, uh, welcome Colleen. Pleasure to see you again. Uh, I am continuing now in this journey of pratica in Italiano and, and uh, I encourage people uh, to actually come to see me also uh, at the Federazione Lucana so that we can have a meeting once, uh, once a month uh, face to face. And uh, this will help a lot with, um, uh, you know, covering la pratica dell'italiano and, of course, uh, a, a deeper knowledge of other languages as well. Because I have here 20 languages at Insegna Booksellers and I'm surrounded by all these books and uh, I love it, absolutely love it. It's paradise for me and uh, I hope, uh, you know, that I can share some of this joy with you in terms of... Um, uh, Italian, because I notice online a lot of people are doing teaching of Italian, but they're doing uh, a word of die, uh, a little phrase, some little... There's no one that really uh, covers it the whole lot, or they got to the verbs, but what I have done uh, in terms of lessons 1 to 20 is actually to uh, consolidate uh, this, that first walk in the forest of Italian and grammar in general. And when you do this for Italian, it, uh, by osmosis, it goes to other languages as well, French, Spanish, and all other languages. Because after all, a language is formed with nine parts or eight parts of speech. It's about nine parts of speech. Now, uh, in Latin, for example, they, in German, they don't have the prepositions. It doesn't matter because there are other ways of doing it with declensions, etc. And also, when you think about other languages and things like Hindi, uh, Farsi, Chinese, uh, all the, the ones with uh, the, the different writings, they, Arabic, they also have the same sort of system. The system of the nine parts of speech, except it's in those pictorial forms or symbolical forms. So it's very important that, that one understands that when you're learning languages, you need to have this overall approach first and then, uh, and, and then go into the practice. And that's what I've done all my life. I've always concentrated on the overall and neglected the, the details. Now, since my wife passed away, uh, things have changed. I've had to go into the details myself, whether it's in business or, you know, online or ordering books, anything like that. But when you do that, you're actually doing the practice. The, and it's not easy. You know, it's not easy to crack an egg if you've never done one. It's sim simple. Welcome to Angela Odorizio, Jennifer Stagno. Uh, Stagno, fantastic, good company this morning. I'm going to entertain you with a lot of uh, uh, interesting uh, material. And of course, the first five minutes are always, for me, my introductory five minutes. And then I got into the actual lesson. So please forgive, you know, the first five minutes are for me to uh, rave on a little bit. And it's important uh, because it, it puts um, the communication right out there for everyone. Uh, my, uh, my opinion is that you should try, if you are interested in either learning the language or teaching it, you should try to go through my lessons uh, 1 to 20. I'm actually revising them myself and I've got to lesson 8 and then I realised this morning, where, where's 9? Because <laughs> I did this all a, a couple of weeks ago and then I forgot about it, as usual, as usual. That's what happens. So this morning we're going to do a lot of uh, different things. I'm going to show you some of the books that we can use. I'm going to practice a sketch uh, some literature, the culture, I'll bring it all in. But I would really love to see you uh, at Federazione Lucana so that we can form this group of interested people uh, in Italian language and to spread the word. This is the work that I began uh, over 40 years ago uh, when I started teaching. Uh, it's almost 50 years now, really. 
uh, and uh, it hasn't stopped. And the need is always there because first generation of Ethel Australians have gone and, you know, schools have got limited time for the teaching of these things. It's hard. It's not easy. It's 11.29. Okay, I better get ready. All right. Well, the first one, what am I going to do? I'll, I'll start with the first one. Last week we did Dal Dottore. I'll read it. Um, what I'll do, I'll read it just once more. And then there are exercises here in this book, Commedia per Principianti, and the exercises are here. So if you have the books that I'm going to suggest that you have with you uh, this morning, then I'll be able to consolidate uh, the material that I use. So it's 11.30. Here we go. Dal dottore. And there are three characters, la signora, il dottore, and il bambino. Here we go. Buongiorno, buongiorno signora, come sta? Io sto bene, il bambino sta male. Ciao piccolo, buongiorno, come stai? Sto molto male, che cosa ti fa male? La testa, il naso e lo stomaco. Sarà l'influenza? Eh sì. Quanti anni hai? Ho 12 anni. Vai a scuola? Sì, vado a scuola. Dove è la scuola? È in città. Come è la scuola? La scuola è terribile. Ma che bambino cattivo, si sdomata. Non è vero che non ti piace. Sì, invece è vero. E invece no. Sì, ti dico. And the doctor intervenes. Vieni qua ed apri la bocca. Ah, la gola non è rossa. Vediamo gli orecchi. Gli orecchi sono neri. Sono sporchi. Vediamo gli occhi. Looks into his eyes. Sono occhi furbi. Tu stai benissimo. No, io sto male. Non è vero. Ritorno a scuola. No, a scuola no. Uh, grabbing a son, piccola scimmia, a scuola ti ci porto io. Il dottore è sciocco. Cosa? A casa facciamo i conti. So that, that, we did that last week. It's just revision. Repetition is important. And the material that we cover, if you repeat them over and over again, then that's it. And if you feel like it, here are the, the exercises. Okay? So you need the book in order for you to do the exercise. And when I see you once a month, if you, you know, i mean, if you are teaching, it's easy. You can use these books to do that, this job with children, uh, etc. So uh, that's what I'm here for, a resource person, uh, physically and with material. And let's face it, you know, I'm not doing the big stuff anymore. Uh, Nenla is not, not, not here. I'm a sole trader now. So I really I thought I'll just try to the public now and enjoy myself as well. Okay, so that was the one. Now, this, the second one is Giovanni Studia. I have actually done this before too, but in this case here, Giovanni, uh, there are five characters. Giovanni, Mario, Alfredo, Anna, Carla, Il Postino, actually six. And the setting is at Giovanni's place. And Giovanni is a bit of a bully. Uh, let's face it. Let's have a look. Giovanni says, silenzio, chi canta? Mario, sono io, bella voce, vero? Giovanni, bellissima, ma adesso Mario, io studio. Mario, ma io canto piano. Giovanni, no, adesso ci vuole silenzio, ecco un libro, leggi. Mario, va bene, leggo. Mario sits and reads. Giovanni tries to study again, but he hears knocking on the door. Chi bussa? The knocking continues. Giovanni is angry. Silenzio! Chi bussa? Uh, sono io, Alfredo. Silenzio, io studio. Ma posso entrare? Uh, sì, ti, ti apro la porta. Let's get up. Alfredo, grazie, cosa fai? Studio, adesso siediti. Alfredo, bene, studio anch'io. They both sit at the desk trying to study, but there's more noise. They can hear laughter coming from the next room. Giovanni, silenzio, chi è? Eh, sono io, Anna. Ma che cosa fai? Sto giocando. Silenzio, io studio. Anna, si sì, va bene. Anna sits and reads quietly, but soon the silence is broken by the sound of an engine being revved up. Giovanni, angry now, he shouts, chi è? Chi fa questo rumore? Basta! Sto cercando di studiare. <laughs> Eh, sono io, Carlo. Cosa fai, sciocco? Lavoro con il motorino e non chiamarmi sciocco. Giovanni, silenzio, io studio. Carlo, ma non faccio tanto rumore. Carlo, entra, siediti e studia. 
Kareva Ben, everyone is trying to study. Now, but outside, someone is calling out Giovanni. Chi è questa volta? He jumps up and he's very angry. Indeed. Giovanni, eh, gets up. Chi è? Giovanni, ti devo dire che è il postino. Eh, il postino. Silenzio, io studio. He grabs a book and throws it at the postman. What a temper. Il postino, ma Giovanni, tu hai vinto la lotteria. <laughs> he hands him the telegram. Giovanni, cosa? Ho vinto? Jumps for joy. Ragazzi, ho vinto? Silenzio, sciocco. Noi studiamo. The bully gets it in the end. So there you are. You know, selfishness shows up. And here again, there are some exercises that follow the, the actual sketch. So if you are learning Italian, this book is a good one. And if you are teaching it, this book is a good one to use as well. Uh, because, you know, that's it. Basically, now, I just want to go through a couple of things grammatically before we, I move to the next bit. Silenzio, chi canta? Chi? Chi? Uh, it's a pronoun. Sono io. You invert the put the io. Oh, it's me. In Latin it would be vocative. Bella voce, vero. Bella before voce and vero. Eh? That's two adjectives there. Bellissima. Uh, bello, più bello, bellissimo. Superlative. Ma adesso Mario, io studio, ma io canto piano. Piano, of course, after cantare, must be an adverb. So that's where the uh, understanding, and, you know, I don't remember all the four parts of speech uh, that are permanent, you know, you don't need to, they are invariable parts of speech. And if you have a list of the conjunctions of the adverbs, the prepositions and the exclamations or interjections, then you don't have to change. Those are things that are remain there. And it's true in English as well. Okay? So that's, I don't want to do much grammar because, I, as I said, I want to do, I, I want to do pratica. So that's, that's number one. Now, the second one is, the second one, what do you have here? Uh, now, I've got here... Uh, I, I forgot my my lesson my, my lesson plan, which was to do other songs that following from last week. But I've got here four of them, and I'm going to do the first one. It's called, called "Dove te canta Piero, canta Piero," and I'm going to show them to you, and then I'll I'll actually read it to you. And if you come, let's say, on the 24th of April, is the next meeting at Federazione Lucana, and it'll be advertised by the club, and they've given me uh, a boardroom uh, because they've got, um, they've got a function as well, which is good. There'll be people there, and uh, it's Federazione Lucana, 3 Cameron Street, Brunswick. And uh, I've been very lucky. I've been working a couple of years uh, to get this thing off the ground, and now I lead the people there. Rosa Voto Australi, welcome. To you too. Nice to see you. Okay, canta Piero. Here we go. These are the words, okay? Now let's have a look. Now this is a beautiful song, a beautiful story, really. A beautiful story. And Piero, of course, is a French uh, mascara. Okay? Let me, I'll sing it to you first and then we'll go through the words maybe. Dove ten vai, Pierro? Pallido e mesto così, senza un sorriso giocondo, sempre ramingo pel mondo. Che vuoi sperare dalla vita qua giù, quando ve gente che non ama più? Prendi la fida chitarra, ritorna a cantar. Non lacrimar, canta Pierro, la più stolta canzone del cuore, canta perché se tu piangi si borlan di te, non sospirar nel ricordo del tempo che fu, devi nella vita recitare la farsa anche tu guardo in me la gioventù come saltello oggi di 
brama soltanto il piacere, l'attimo sol vuol godere, e su di un ritmo fatal di jazz band, ballando tango foxtrot se ne sta, credendo un ballo la vita, un ballo l'amor, uccide il cor. Canta Pierrò la più stolta canzone del cuore, canta perché se tu piangi si borlan di te, non sospirar nel ricordo del tempo che fu, devi nella vita recitare la farsa anche tu. Wow. I hope you enjoyed that one. <laughs> now, just a couple of things before we actually look at uh, Canta Piero a bit in more detail, is that if you come to the to Federazione Lucana, and I'm going to do this once a month, I think, uh, I've worked it out that, uh, you know, I can manage that, uh, 3.30 till 5.30 on a Sunday, Sunday the 24th, day before Anzac Day. Now, I will have, uh, I also do some songs there and I give the songs, I have some copies so you can take them away with you and use them whichever way you like. And if you come and see me, if you don't want to wait, come and see me and uh, I'll photocopy some of these for you. Easy, easy. Everything is easy. Okay, so let's have a look now. Just a little bit of, uh, I said, as I said, this is, um, uh, this is pratic. I don't want to do too much on grammar, but... At least, the least I can do is show you that um, you know the, the words for canta Pierrot. Okay, un sorriso, il mondo, la vita, la gente, la chitarra, la canzone, il cuore, il ricordo, il tempo, la farsa, il piacere, l'attimo, un ritmo, il jazz band. Il tango, il foxtrot, l'amor, il cor. Now, with these words here, you can do un sorriso, but it's il sorriso. You can turn all those uh, definite articles into indefinite articles. You can turn the definite articles into the plural as well. That's, uh, you know, going through my grammar lessons 1 to 20, the first one or two or three. And um, uh, then the explanations of uh, amor, cor, you know, the, the dropping off the is at the end. Uh, that, that happens with the creative people. Okay, the adjectives are pallido, mesto, giocondo, ramingo, fida, faithful, stolta, fatale. A beautiful, they're, be they're, they're beautiful adjectives. So I didn't do uh, the verbs, I didn't do the other parts of speech, uh, I don't have any more. So that's it for now, for Canta Pierrot. Okay, now after this Canta Pierrot, there is one other book here that I think you should, uh, you should um, see. Uh, here it is. Sorry, I've got to put this back. And turn it around. There we are. This one here. L'Italiano with Patience. Now, this is a book for nurses and people uh, in the health system because the words and the activities are all to do with communicating with people who are sick, who need, you know, this ideal for people who visit, um, you know, uh, well, <laughs> people in the third age. Uh, I've always tried to keep young, so, uh, but, you know, if you're sick... Uh, you need some company, and if you're on your own, uh, it's a real problem. But uh, as I said, if you keep going, so th these are the words. So if you don't speak the language or you don't know much of it, uh, the, and this is a very good book to, to use uh, when teaching. It's L'Italiano with Patience. It's another one, and I'll show you. Uh, th this one here, last week I did some words. Here, we're going to do Il Bagno e la Camera da Letto. Let's have a look. Il bagno, bagno, doccia, rubinetto, lavabo, scaldabagno, asciuga capelli, asciuga mano, spazzolino da denti, dentifricio, sapone, gabinetto. So that's il bagno. Eh? 
se il, il paziente può sentirsi disorientato e chiede dove, o dove sono queste cose, dove è il letto, dove sono le pantofole, ecco il letto, ecco la pantofola. La camera da letto, eh? here we are. letto, copri letto, luce, comodino, cuscino, sveglia, campanello, bottiglia d'acqua, bicchiere, lenzuolo. E you can ask, dov'è uh, dov il campanello, dov'è il bicchiere, dov'è uh, il copriletto, you know, c'è freddo, etc. So, and then, uh, the, the, this is part of the, that first lesson, and then there, there's a little uh, conversation here. Buongiorno, ciao, come stai? Io sto benissimo, grazie, e tu? Così, così, come ti chiami? Io mi chiamo Isabella e tu? Io sono Daniele, piacere. Daniele, sia, sei australiano? Sì, sono australiano. Anche, very simple, very simple words. Of course, uh, this is a precursor to the sketches and the plays. And it's very important. And also, to the study of, um, of La Commedia, you know, uh, theater, Italian theater in general, from La Commedia dell'Arte and before. So I'll bring the, the, those things in. That's the other book that I wanted to show you, L'Italiano with Patience. And now, uh, after that, verbs, idioms, useful for Oh, yes, last week we did this. Where is it? Where is it? Here it is, underneath. Of course, when you're looking for something. Last week we did uh, the Il Cibo, if you remember. Okay, we did the following words. So just in case you weren't there last week, we'll have a look. Here we go. Here we are. Il Cibo. Now, how many of these words did you know last week? Huh? Say after me. La prima colazione, il pranzo, la cena, il tè. Il latte, il caffè, lo zucchero, la marmellata, la marmellata d'arancio, il miele, il biscotto, l'uovo alla coque, l'uovo sul piatto, la minestra, il riso, la pasta, i legumi, le patate bollite, fritte, l'arrosto, la carota, i fagioli, i piselli, il fungo. Il cavolo fiori, gli spinaci, il carciofo, il sedano, il pomodoro, il cetriolo, la lattuga, l'insalata, la cipolla. See, you've got to remember these words. It's very difficult unless you use them. Uh, la menta, il prezzemolo, l'aglio, il pane, il burro, il panino, la fetta, il toast o pane arrostito. La carne, la selvaggina, il pollame, il manzo, la bistecca di manzo, il vitello, il maiale, il prosciutto, la salsiccia, l'agnello, il pesce, la frutta, l'albicocca, l'ananas, la mela, l'arancio, la banana, la ciliegia, i datteri, il fico, la pera, la prugna, l'uva, il lampone. Now these are words that are necessary. Now the reason why I'm doing them again is because uh, I didn't finish the job last week and I'll show you as soon as we get there. La mora, la fragola, il limone, la pesca, la noce, la mandorla, la castagna, l'acqua, il vino, la birra, il liquore, la limonata, il pepe, il sale, l'aceto, il bicchiere, la bottiglia, la tazza, il piattino, il piatto, il coltello, la forchetta, il cucchiaio, la teiera, la caffettiera, la zuccheriera, il vassoio, la tovaglia, il coperchio. That's what we did last week. So that's the advantage when, you know, if you've got uh, students online, etc., you can, can teach hundreds of people here easily, easily. And here we go again, the verbs. Now, the verbs we didn't do last week, to be hungry is aver fame, avere fame. Io ho fame, tu hai fame. Uh, lui ha fa uh, that's the present tense. Io avevo fame, tu avevi fame. Uh, il dottore uh, ebbe fame prima di andarsene dove voleva andare. Cioè, uh, a un certo punto, you can use all of the verb conjugate, the, 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 the tenses, and you can make sentences with these. Some of the, uh, some of the verbs used for il cibo. To be thirsty, aver sete. Notice the auxiliary verb avere. Io ho, tu hai, lui ha, noi abbiamo, voi avete, loro hanno, etc. To be underfed, essere malnutrito. Essere in this case here, 
is uh, an auxiliary, but it to be. Sono malnutrito, to say malnutrita. So the, the pa, malnutrito in that case is from malnutrire, okay, to, to, you know, to, to, to be lacking in having food, to be underfed, you know. Uh, I am underfed, you are underfed, etc. So it's a past participle. But this, in this case, when you use avere, essere, you have to, uh, the past participle becomes like an adjective. So there you are. I don't need to explain this all the time, but I point it out just in case to encourage people to come on. And welcome to Maria Anna Cassino to encourage other people to actually look at those first 20 lessons. I'm very proud of it because. Uh, in uh, revising the grammars, uh, you know, in general, I found that some of the grammars <laughs> didn't have the right, uh, the right verb in the subjunctive. I, I couldn't believe it. Uh, professore di università, etc. But uh, when you do, you know, when, when you do anything, I make mistakes. Uh, people make, depending on where you're at at the time. Okay, so don't be afraid of making mistakes. It's all part of it. Actually, the more mistakes you make, and the more relaxed you are, the better it is for you. So let's have a look. To have a snack, fare uno spuntino. Io faccio, tu fai, lui fa. Noi facciamo, voi fate, loro fanno. You have to learn this an irregular verb, which I did not do in the uh, grammar. Uh, I will touch on it as I move along. To have breakfast, fare colazione, pranzare, to have lunch, to have supper, cenare, to cook, cucinare o cuocere. Uh, that's, uh, the, that's a good one for the past absolute. Io cossi, tu cocesti e gli cosse. Noi cocemmo, voi coceste e si cossero. That's the... <laughs> it's an irregular verb. Eh? From cuocere, eh? you get to cos. Io cossi, tu cocesti e gli cosse. Eh, unbelievable. Bollire, friggere, uh, to, to boil and to fry. To sit at the table, sedersi a tavola, to wash up, fare i piatti, to bite, mordere, to swallow, ingoiare. Now, these are good words in English as well, because then what you can do here, you, you can use some of these uh, phrases, idioms and useful phrases. To die of hunger, morire di fame. Hungry, starving, affamato. Appetite, l'appetito, buon appetito. Dig digestion, la digestione. I hope you enjoy your dinner. Buon appetito. Now, come on. I hope you enjoy your dinner. You don't say that. Buon appetito. Have a good meal. That's where it should be. See, what I'm saying is it depends on you. Oh, I hanno fatto uno sbaglio. Non è sbaglio. Tutto fa brodo, but it's okay. Si può dire, I hope you enjoy your dinner. If you want to be formal, I hope you enjoy your dinner. Like, like have a good meal. Uh, it's a different take. The maid, the waiter, waitress, la domestica, at home, il cameriere, in the restaurant, la cameriera, in a hotel room, etc., etc. Lies the table, apparecchia la tavola. Lies the, he lies or she lies the table. Apparecchiare, to lay a table. Bring a cup of tea, porta una tazza di, brings a cup of tea. He or she brings. Why not say to bring? a cup of tea, and, rather, and you, you could have said uh, portare una tazza di te, so you leave the verb in the infinitive. And this is what people then will pick on in a classroom and waste time. But that's part of it. Serves the guest, serve gli ospiti. Now, I think they did it this way so that you can use these phrases when you write. So really, if you want to, as says, la dieta, mania del giorno, des mania, es, uh, all my life, people around me, sono tutti in dieta, mentre io, la migliore dieta che faccio io è quando mangio, mangio, that's it. Uh, mangio, mangio quello che mi piace, mi piace quello che mangio, no? Otherwise I won't have it. Il mio piatto preferito, it's taken me 40 years to put on a big of a tummy, and now it's going to take me next 40 years to take it off. Where well, some people are disciplined and they don't put on weight. It's a discipline. Welcome to Maria Faila as well. This morning we have quite a few people interested in either learning. I think most of you that will come on actually want to see, uh, to teach the language. And I encourage you to actually 
uh, give some of your time to the teaching of Italian on a one-to-one -one because the physicality is important online up to a point. So, you know, giving your time to a few people who want to learn the language, have a cup of tea or whatever. It's good, a good idea. So that's, that's Il Cibo. Now, there are many others that we'll do as we go along, okay? So we did that, Il Cibo. Now I'm going to do something that you will be very pleased with because this one here, this song here, look at this, look at this. I want to show you this. I want to show you something. Look at that. Mala Femina, Liliana de Curtis. Uh, this is the story of Toto and his wife, beautiful woman. And he, he called her Mala Femina. She was a victim of his bullying. <laughs> and, the, and the daughter, and the daughter, uh, it describes this very highly intelligent, uh, but he had la gelosia lo, lo amazzava because she was such a pretty girl. And he, he was 21 and she was uh, 14, you know, 15. No, he was 30, 15 year difference. Unbelievable. And he writes a song called Mala Femmina. It should be Mala Woman. No? <laughs> so here we go. Mala Femmina. Now, I'm going to, I am going to Sing it to you. There you are. Uh, I might have to take it out of the... Uh, I'll take it out. Well, otherwise... Oopla. Come on, Pop. Here we go. Mala Femmina. And notice my Neapolitan. Si avisse fatta nata Quello che ha fatta me Stomma t'avessi acciso, tu vuoi sapere perché? Perché in coppa sta terra, femmine come a te, non c'è ne sta per nome, onesta come a me. Femmina, tu sei una mala femmina, chi sto occhi fatti chiangere, lacrime e infamità. Femmina, si tu peggi una vipera, ma non tu succata l'anima, non posso più campare. Femmina, si dolce come un zucchero, per sta faccia d'angela ti serve per ingannare. Femmina, tu sia più bella femmina, te voglio bene e t'odio, non te posso scordare. Te voglio ancora bene, ma tu non sai perché, perché l'unico amore si è stata tu per me, e tu per no capriccio, tu te distrutto in me, ma Dio non ti perdona, che la che ha fatto a me, femmina, tu sei una mala femmina. Beautiful, huh? That wasn't too bad at all. It, it takes a while to learn. Can I, can, I can tell you this now. It takes a while to learn these things. But I can do all of the singers now. I'm very happy with my progress in these matters. Okay. Now, of course, this is... Uh, they say dia dialetto. But the dialetto is a lingua locale. Uh, dialetto is like a put down. It's like what Toto does to his wife. She's such a beautiful person and he calls her mala femmina because he looks at it from his point of view. He was such a jealous person. He used to lock her in, <laughs> in his little room when he was in the theatre in the backstage so that people wouldn't look at her and talk to her. He stopped her from going to see her mother when she was sick. She lived in Rome and the mother lived in, uh, you know, Hawaii, in Tuscany somewhere. Uh, and then he was away for a while. She went to, to you know, as, as the years went by. And then uh, for some reason she had enough. And, you know, they, they separated. But he, she loved him and he loved her to the very end. That's it. And we have this beautiful song. 
nat stom stater femmine, mala femmine, lacrime, na vipere, l'anima, molto zucchero, non capriccio. So you can actually learn uh, Neapolitan by looking at, uh, say, the way the, the articles uh, are put in front of words, you know, nat, nat, natra, etc. So that, that's it, I don't have much uh, study on, on this, I think. I, no, I don't have, I've only got a few words here. But I can, again, we can do this together and we can sing it together uh, if, you come, if you come to Federazione Lucana. Uh, I'll, you can actually ask me, say, well, bring uh, Malafem and I'll bring this or let's do this. You can make suggestions, okay? So we've done essential vocabulary. We've done, uh, we, we've done, uh, what do you call it? Uh, that's right, that's, that's done. This one here is, I need this again. Um, and that's Malafem. I've read the book. Uh, it's unbelievable. Uh, I couldn't believe it. Now, this one here is another, uh, is another word list. Uh, let's do the colours, okay? I colori. Arancione, grigio, blu. Bianco, verde, nero, rosso, azzurro, giallo, marrone, violetto, rosa. The explanation is required here because adjectives change. Arancione ends with an E, so there are only two forms of arancione e arancioni. But grigio, io, the ending is grigia. Uh, but if you want to say grigi, you just drop the O, because you've got to retain the sound. And grigie would be G-E, grigie. So they are adjectives. Blue does not change. It's one, it's blue, singular, plural, masculine, feminine. La, la, la donna blu, l'uomo blu, uh, il ragazzo blu, la, la bambina blu. That's it. Bianco needs a bit of attention. Bianco, bianca, C-I, C-O, it's a K sound. But if you want to say plural of bianco, you want an I, you can't say bian and put an I there, it becomes, because it would be bianchi, so you have to say bianchi, C-H-I, and C-H-E, bianche. So be aware of those. Verde, it ends in E, so it's verde, verdi. It's not verda o verdo, no, 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 it doesn't, but nero, yes, nero, nera, neri, nere. Rosso, rossa, rossi, rosse. Azzurro, azzurri, azzurro, uh, sorry, azzurra, azzurro, azzurra, azzurri, azzurre. Giallo, gialla, gialli, gialle. But marrone, like before, marrone. Uh, in Chinese, so marrone, marroni, that's it. Violetto, violetta, violetti, violette. Rosa is like blue, doesn't change. So these are common adjectives. A rosa is pink. Okay? And I have here uh, someone calls rosa voto australe. But rosa, apart from being pink, is also a, a rose, a, a pink rose. Well, if you say rosa, rosa, huh? Rosa e rosa, rosa, etc., etc. You can play on those words there. So that's, that's it. And uh, there are also a lot of, um, with this book here, there are a lot of uh, exercises. So that's, that's where we are. Now, you can see I work pretty hard <laughs> when I'm here, but I wanted to do a bit of literature as well, a bit of literature, and because now it's autunno, okay, l'autunno. And this is, um, now, this is going to be for more advanced students of Italian, of course, l'autunno. Okay, uh, this is from Vincenzo Cardarelli, one of, the, uh, one of the poets of Italy, but not very well known, but secondary, it's a secondary uh, poet. But Vincenzo Cardelli, pretty, you know, uh, you, you find him. He says, l'autunno, because we are in the middle of autumn. And let, let's not forget there's a six months difference between Italy and here. So the, these ones here refer to the Italian autumn, which is September, October, November. Okay, so autunno. 
Già lo sentimmo venire nel vento d'agosto, nelle piogge di settembre, torrenziali e piangenti, e un brivido percorse la terra che ora nuda e triste accoglie un sole smarrito. Ora passa, declina, in questo autunno che incede con lentezza indicibile il, mio, il miglior tempo della nostra vita e lungamente ci dice addio. Now, how do you tackle something like this? If, you, if you're an adult, all you have to do is get a pencil, underline all the words you don't know. The ones you know, you know. The ones you don't know, you underline. And it takes a while to get the, the translation of this. Okay, so but today I'm just reading them just for the pleasure of it. So let's have a look at the, at the rest. There's also all about Pensiero d'autunno. And who did this one here? Ada Negri, beautiful. Ada Negri is also a great Italian, uh, Italian poetess. Okay, pensiero d'autunno. Dall'alto dei rami illuminati da un limpido sole, le foglie si staccano fitte e lentamente, ritornano alla terra. La loro giornata è finita. Anche la giornata della poetessa è vicina al tramonto, ma la sua preghiera è serena. È piena di dolcezza, l'attesa sarà lieve nella pace del Signore. Isn't that beautiful, very religious here? I think Ada Negri, I'm not sure, I think uh, from Sardegna, I'm not quite sure, I have to check it out. Fammi uguale, Signore, a quelle foglie moribonde che vedo oggi al sole, tremar dell'olmo sul più alto ramo. That's the beautiful part. Eh? Tremano, sì, ma non di pena. È tanto limpido il sole, è dolce il distaccarsi dal ramo per congiungersi alla terra. S'accendono alla luce ultima cuori pronti all'offerta e l'agonia per esse alla clemenza di una mite au aurora. Fa che io mi stacchi dal più alto ramo di mia vita, così senza lamento, penetrata di te come del sole. What a beautiful... Uh, welcome to Salva Scholl. This is a beautiful poem, really and truly. Look at this, unbelievable. She, she says, she says, Fammi uguale, signore, a quelle foglie moribonde che vedo oggi al sole, tremar dell'olmo sul più alto ramo, from the elm trees, if you go to uh, the Princess Park. Uh, there are a lot of elm trees there. And she says, let me, you know, I, I, sono una foglia al di sopra. Tremano sì, ma non di pena. Uh, they, in the breeze, they move. È tanto limpido il sole, dolce il distaccarsi dal ramo per congiungersi alla terra. So, it's, it, that leaves in, in autumn, it's in the breeze, slowly, it's going to, Uh, untie itself from uh, from the branch. Now, when you untie yourself from the branch, uh, and she says, a dolce discard. So, in other words, when you come to the end, you might as well do it in a beautiful way. Dolce, con dolcezza, per congiungersi alla terra. And in our case, when you go, to, co to congiungi al cielo. S'accendono alla luce ultima cuori pronti all'offerta. E l'agonia per esse alla clemenza di una mite aurora. L'aurora is the day after uh, l'alba. So when you go to terra, when you come into earth, when you go, you can, that passage there. Fa che io mi stacchi dal più alto ramo di mia vita, così, senza lamento. Don't complain, accept what life gave us. Penetrata di te, filled with you, like in the sun. Unbelievable, huh? And this one here, Sera d'Ottobre. This is by Giovanni Pascoli, of course, one of the premier, uh, premier poets of Italy. And also, he was a professor. And he also won, uh, he got um, uh, the liter literary uh, The prem, Premio Nobel della Letteratura. I think it's about 2006, can't remember. Ok, let's have a look. Sera d'ottobre, lungo la strada vedi sulla siepe 
ridere ammazzi le vermiglie bacche, nei campi arati tornano al presepe tarde le vacche. Vien per la strada un povero che il lento passo fra foglie stridule trascina, nei campi intuona una fanciulla al vento, fiore di spina. Uh, these are beautiful poems. And they need interpretation, of course. Uh, this one here, another one from Giovanni Pasquale, and I'll finish off with San Martino, and then that's it for today, uh, with the literature part. November, what time is it? Yeah, I've got time. Now, this is another one from Giovanni Pasquale, November. This for November, which six months from November would be about May, here, May here. Okay? Gemmea Laria, uh, I'm reading through the phone, so I've got to... Uh, let me see if I can manage th this way here. Yes, I can. Gemmea Laria, il sole così chiaro che tu ricerchi gli albicocchi in fiore e del prunalbo l'odorino amaro senti nel cuore. Ma secco il pruno e le stecchite piante di nere trame segnano il sereno e vuoto il cielo e cavo al pie sonante sembra il terreno. Silenzio intorno, solo alle ventate, o di lontano da giardini ed orti, di foglie un cader fragile e l'estata fredda dei morti. Of course, il 2 novembre è la giornata dei morti. E now this is San Martino. You remember this one from school? If you went to school in Italy, you would, have, you would know this off by heart. La nebbia e gli irti colli, piovviginando sale, e sotto il maestrale urla e biancheggia il mar. Ma per le vie del borgo, dal ribollir dei tini, va l'aspro d'or dei vini, l'anime a rallegrar. Gira su ceppi accesi, lo spiedo scoppiettando. Sta il cacciator fischiando sull'uscio a rimirar. Tra le rossastre nubi, stormi d'uccelli neri, come esuli pensieri nel vespero migrar. How do you like that, huh? That's a beautiful, that's really, really beautiful. It's a, so we've done quite a few, we've done quite a few po uh, poesie, eh? Uh, but of course, the, these are difficult to... Well, let me put this away. Upla. These are difficult, uh, difficult words. You know, these are for people who know the language and who want to, you know, go back and uh, enjoy uh, the knowledge, uh, the knowledge that uh, you have of the of Italian, because Italian can never be learned in full. You can't do it. It's just it's a very rich language and. Uh, a proud one, and I'm very happy to say that in Australia, from my latest, uh, you know, someone told me that there are close to, well, two years ago, 370,000 students of Italian in Australia. This is the second country in the world where Italian is taught uh, after Italy to such an extent. So there's a great interest in the Italian language and uh, the more people we have working uh, towards it, uh, it, it'll maintain the language as a second language. I've never said that one should only know Italian or should only know English. It's wrong for people to say, when I go to Italy, no, qui non si parla l'inglese, ma io voglio parlare inglese perché a me piace. Uh, a me piace anche ascoltare il cinese, il turco, il, le lingue che non conosco, perché quelle lingue lì ci arricchiscono, anche soltanto ad ascoltare la voce, le, il ritmo della lingua, ti dice tanto del popolo. So, uh, you know, it's an interesting one, uh, uh, interesting thoughts about languages, and if you can help, in that way there, it's, la lingua è una miniera, it's a mine, it's, it's a window to the world, so languages in general. And I, I have been fortunate because I'm surrounded by books in other languages, and for 50 years I've uh, been doing all this continuously. But now online I actually feel comfortable actually coming on uh, three times a week, uh, four times a week now, I do 
Dante Alighieri, I'm up to count to 28. I think next week it'll be count to 29. So we're getting close to Lucifer, the, the, the devil, which is in, uh, he appears in count to 34. And then from, from the bottom of hell, because hell is like a cone, uh, the, the, the worst sins are right at the end. The bottom, but then from the, the bottom of of hell, there's a little door that lead, that leads into uh, into the, the open sky again, and therefore there you start in Purgatorio. It's in reverse. Uh, the ones with the greatest sins to be forgiven are down the bottom, and as you move up the cone then you get to the part right at the top where you close the paradise. And that's, you know, il cielo, l'empireo, uh, paradiso. And that'll be, you know, the pleasures of paradise or the satisfactions. So Dante Alighieri, an interesting, uh, inter interesting writer for many reasons, but his language is very difficult. And um, I am managing to uh, explaining it in English in my own words, with lots and lots of mistakes. I don't pretend I know. Uh, I mean, I've started this for my own personal journey. That's one. The other journey was the world history on a Thursday, the same time as now. And I, I've done so far from the beginning of time, from the Big Bang Theory uh, of the world, and uh, I'm at the Iron Age. And uh, at the moment, I've done the Hittites and the Assyrians, and now we'll be doing the Chaldeans. But I've covered all of the continents as well. And then on Friday, I thought, you know, Tom, you know, you're a teacher of French, you don't speak French, you, don't, you haven't been with French people, so what are you going to do about it? And I thought, well, I'll give half an hour on a, on a Friday. Uh, and I thought, and how do you encourage people to learn another language? I don't know Spanish, I'm going to learn Spanish alongside uh, I teach French, last five, ten minutes, I dedicate to Spanish. And that's basically it, and it's all online. I don't make any apologies for this, for the mistakes. You can do the same. And I encourage you to do the same. I encourage you to sing. But I would love to see people coming to Federazione Lucana. I want to see people. And in fact, I do go and see people uh, on... Uh, uh, when was it last Sunday? I also went. Uh, I went to two clubs on Saturday, the Solarino Social Club, and then Sunday was at, uh, during the day was Federazione Organa, and then Fogola Furlan. Now, at the Fogola Furlan, it's got a beautiful place, and there was a beautiful uh, band called uh, No Limits, Ross Dallarico, and I'll be putting some of those, um, some of the filmati of uh, uh, what they played, because I want to promote whoever doesn't matter who, provided they give me the okay to do so. Because if they say no, then I won't do it. I'll do something else. It doesn't worry me at all. They should be grateful to me for taking the time to do this. And I think, um, you know, once upon a time, is to say, excuse me, can I, this and that. Because oh, they love the passion. Uh, but now I realise that it's not all like that. Some people don't want to be seen. Uh, they don't want to share their work. They don't... Uh, it's, it's like that. And it's not a problem to me anymore. So we've done, we've done uh, Malafem, Autun, I've done the, now Commedia dell'arte. I, I was going to do Commedia dell'arte to talk about Commedia dell'arte, and I thought I've got here my iPad in front of me, but I don't know. It's giving me grief at the moment uh, because I got to. So you, you got to uh, where to Google, right? And then we got to, you say, you say Italian theater. I'm doing Italian theater. I'm gonna show you. There you are, see Italian theater. Now we press a button, and if it doesn't do it, you know, for some reason, you're not doing it. Oh, I've got to write it down. That's it, now, now it's done. Now, so well, look, it's coming up slowly but surely. Try again. Can't can't show you. Sorry. 
But I can talk about it. I can talk about Commedia dell'arte. I'll organize myself for next time a bit better uh, because obviously I've had Wi Fi problems here uh, during the day and I've got Telstra coming at one o'clock. Uh, let's hope we can fix it. And that's the reason why this was working because I've got. I've been down since last Thursday, so it's a bit of a problem. Uh, and this thing's surely pazienza. Without the patience, you can't do it. So the next one was another beautiful song called, and this is, uh, this is Piemonte. Everybody knows this song, everybody. You remember this one? I challenge you to sing it along with me. Come on, you can do it. Piemontesina, let's start. Addio bei giorni passati, mia piccola amica ti devo lasciar. Gli studi son già terminati, abbiamo finito così di sognar. Lontano andrò, dove non so. Parto col pianto nel cuor, dammi l'ultimo bacio d'amor. Non ti potrò scordare, Piemontesina bella, sarai la sola stella che brillerà per me. Ricordi quelle sere passate al Valentino, col biondo studentino che ti stringeva sul cuor. Totina il tuo allegro studente di un giorno lontano e adesso dottor. Ma, pur, ma io curo la povera gente ma pure non riesco a guarire il mio cuor. La gioventù non torna più quanti ricordi d'amor a Torino ho lasciato il mio cuore. And then uh, music, ricordi quelle sere passate al Valentino col biondo studentino che ti stringeva sul cuore. So there you are, that's another song that can... Can, but, but that one is a, a very popular song, really. Uh, the Italian community, all the clubs. Uh, no, when, when we have um, uh, Festa della Repubblica, etc., the, uh, the, this is part of uh, the songs that are very well known here in uh, Melbourne. Uh, but some of the songs that I sing are not uh, from, uh, are not common. For example, I wasn't going to do this one today, but I'll, I think I'll do it because I've got a bit of time. Uh, so, La Mazzurca della Nonna, I've, I've sung this before. I've sung this before and I could have done it some other time as well, but here we go. Let's have a look. La Mazzurca della Nonna. Okay? La Mazzurca della Nonna. Grazie Maria for singing. Okay, this one here. Is La Mazzurca della Nonna. Uh, this is beautiful. And I'm, you know, I have to, uh, I want you to, uh, to read along with me too. So I'm doing it through the, the phone. And let's, let's have a look. Quando senti l'orchestrina tra una danza americana che strimpella una mazzurca dall'aria paesana pensi allora alla quadriglia d'un bel tempo che passò quando usava la pariglia attaccata all'andò quando non c'erano i tanghi e i foxtrot ah la mazzurca che ballava la mia nonna con le trecce a penzoloni e con i mutandoni sotto la sua gonna quando mio nonno, per baciare la sua mano, non usava la scaletta ma la bicicletta fino al primo piano, i giovincelli di vent'anni o poco più, come eran belli coi baffoni per l'insù, 
alla mazzurca d'un bel tempo assai lontano quando prima di sposarsi stavano a guardarsi con le mani in mano or si balla la carioca il sassofono rimbomba ma mio nonno Suona ancora il grammofono a tromba, pensa in me con nostalgia all'antica gioventù, quando allora ogni Maria non era Mario, come era bello quel tempo che fu. Ah, la mazzurca che ballava la mia nonna, con le trocce a penzoloni, con i mutantoni sotto la sua gonna. Quando suo nonno... Quando? <laughs> we'll stop it there. You get the idea, though. That's a beautiful song. Uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful song. And um, it's a mazurka. So if there's music there and you've got, um, you know, the ability to, to play the music, this is a wonderful song to learn because the story is nice. It's, it's a beautiful story. And a lot of these, too, can be used to create stories of our own. Quando senti l'orchestrina, for example, quanto, uh, 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 quanto, quanto, quanto Rosa balla, uh, <laughs> i suoi valzi, i suoi tango, uh, eccetera, eccetera. You can create uh, songs about the things we do every day. And why not? You know, these are, this is what learning is. You've got to pass it on. The, the beautiful thing is to pass uh, what you know on, because if you're not here anymore, you're like a library. When you're gone, your library is gone too. So I leave as much as possible to others. <laughs> uh, well, you never know, you never know. Now, it's 12.25 and I want to do one last bit, uh, because I think this book here is being, is being used in a number of classes too. It's called Dimmi una parola, this one here, okay? And this is very good because it's got the explanation in English. It's got the explanation in English. Uh, that's, that's how it is. It's, it's one of the books that I gave away and it came back to me. <laughs> and, uh, yes, that's it. Yes, of course, well, never mind. Anyway, this book here has... Um, has the, 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 I want to show you the, here we are, there we are. Table of contents, introduction to the Italian language, come ti chiami, a scuola, single and plurals, i numeri, quanti anni hai, la famiglia, che ora sono compiuti. So you can see it's a, it's a beginning, this is a good course to do with your students, whether adults or children, it doesn't matter. Uh, because with the adults you can split it up. You can probably do this in six months, even less, you know, once a week. But if the person is keen and they want to do it, they learn. The, uh, if you've looked at my uh, lessons, 1 to 20, first, and then you come back to this. But th this one here, even lesson 1 to 10, already explains uh, what goes on in here. There are a lot of exercises, as you can see here. You know, it, most of the course books that I have here, they're all to do with learning the language from textbooks, etc. But the reality is that if you really want to learn the language, you have to do theatre, il teatro. Devi cantare, fare teatro, conversare, have small parties, you know, language, language meetings. Even in a cafe, you know, in a restaurant, once, a week, once every two, two weeks, a little group of people, four or five people, e parlate in italiano, but it's very hard to speak in Italian, uh, di creare la conversazione, se non lo parli già. Quindi hai bisogno di, uh, di un po' di aiuto. L'aiuto viene da questi libri. Quindi se 4, 5, 10 persone... Uh, hanno lo stesso libro, ci vediamo fra due settimane. Non fa niente che non l'avete studiato, ma almeno c'hai il materiale lì davanti che, posso, che tutti possono usare. E so you, you sort of you know, uh, talk to each other. 
Uh, and eventually, you know, you got to stick to it. Uh, I'm meeting some of the bands. Now, the band that I met uh, on Sunday, they've been together for 33 years, even no longer, two of them, 40, 50 years. The same people doing the same thing together. So unity is not an easy thing to achieve. Uh, Rosa Voto Australia knows this intimately because, you know, running a Tarantella school, you've got to have people who follow you. You, you know, you've got to have the right interest, the people who are interested, that, you know, maybe uh, I'm interested in looking at it, but to go there and, you know, I'd rather do something else. Like other people would rather do something else than listen to Tom Padula. It's as simple as that. There's nothing wrong with that. But my point I want to make, and I keep on repeating it because each week or each time that I come on, I think, yeah, what about if somebody hasn't seen me before? So I sort of mention it again. But so, so far today, if you've noticed, I've given you, and I didn't do one other one, one other book here, this one here. This other one, speak by the speak. This is another good one because, and I'll show you why. Here we are. We said last week we did um, this one here. Buongiorno, bambini, ragazzi, buonasera a tutti. And then there's the English. Well, then there is here. Facciamo gli auguri. Buone vacanze. Buon Natale. Buona Pasqua. Eh, coming up now. Buon anno. Buon compleanno a... Maria, chi fa il compleanno oggi? Chi compie gli anni domani? Oggi è il compleanno di tanti auguri. And this is not just a little, um, you know, just words. These are, are phrases that you can use, stock phrases. These are the best wishes in English. So how do you say enjoy your holidays? How do you say Merry Christmas in Italian? How do you say Happy Easter? Enjoy the festivities? Etc, etc. So you can check it out. Together, you don't want, or one at a time. Uh, more, more of those. Congratulazioni, buona fortuna, buon lavoro, in bocca al lupo, salute, evviva, cin cin, viva la classe terza, buon divertimento, buon viaggio. And this one here, congratulations. So if you have these books here and you want to teach Italian, it's easy, but by teaching it to somebody else, you're actually learning. It's like what I'm doing with my French and my Spanish. If I had to teach someone else, I would have to learn the, um, you know, uh, the phrases. For example, you know, uh, let me see. <laughs> Spanish. I've got my Spanish book here. So you got Spanish. Let's have a look. The months of the year. Okay. Let's have a look at this one here. Enero, febrero, marzo, abril, mayo, junio. You don't pronounce the J. Julio, agosto, septiembre, octubre, noviembre, diciembre. But when I try to remember it, <laughs> do I remember it? No, I don't remember. Enero, febrero. So I've got to repeat it over and over again. And these lessons here, these ones with uh, uh, my uh, uh, pratica, these are ideal because I cover a lot of material here a lot of material, and if I could target the people that wanted to learn, that Maria said to me, fatto, grazie, so in other words, Maria, I know that she sings the songs when I sing them, Maria Fail. but the others, they're just watching. So I, I need, you know, that, um, I need people to talk to me online, just a few words, you know, uh, how do you say, I can answer questions easily, but, I would rather you say, listen, I enjoyed uh, Canta Piero. I loved uh, Piemontesina. Uh, it was interesting, uh, you know, Malafemme and the story of Toto. <laughs> because Toto has got about 200 films that he made. He's a very funny guy. You wouldn't expect him to have such, um, uh, such, psycho such jealousy. Uh, it's just unbelievable. The, the, his jealousy was uh, was incredible. It was uh, was something that uh, very hard to uh, accept. Even it's twelve thirty three. I don't believe this. I have to go. Okay, uh, I have to go. I've got three triple Z now <laughs> for ten minutes. 
that's uh, that's good for ten minutes at one o'clock, uh, but one o five. So, ciao, arrivederci a tutti, alla prossima da Tom Padula from Tom Padula TV on YouTube and Insegna Booksellers. Ciao.